Could the filming of police behaviour in the US be a watershed moment for race relations there? Mobile phone footage from earlier this month showing a white police officer in Texas pulling his gun on a black teenager caused outrage across the country. The officer has since quit the force. But many are speculating that had the incident not been caught on camera, the officer might still be in his job. In a moment, we'll hear from the family of one black man in Washington who was shot dead by police. Without footage of the incident, they say they're concerned that whoever pulled the trigger won't be brought to book. But first, here's a look at some of the stats. Well, live now to Washington and our correspondent Tom Bateman. I mean, some of those figures are absolutely astonishing. 385 people shot in the first five months of the year. Are people only just waking up to, to those kind of numbers? Well, I think they are, Victoria, and part of the reason for that, you know, I've been talking to lots of people in law enforcement and people on the other side whose families have been affected by this, and what they say is, well, look, this has been going on for as long as anyone can remember. What is new now is the huge publicity that's being generated around this. And that's, of course, after the police shooting dead of a, uh, an unarmed black teenager in Ferguson last summer. And then these cases in which um, the police have been filmed in incidents of alleged police brutality. And those numbers are just staggering. I mean, if you think about it this way. Uh, between now and Monday, uh, more people will have been shot dead by police in the United States than police in England and Wales have killed in the last five years. So because the numbers are so big, many of these cases simply kind of don't get the scrutiny, uh, don't get the press coverage uh, that they might do elsewhere. So we've been looking at just one case here in Washington, D.C. A man was shot dead by the police uh, on Christmas Eve. His name was Gregory Marcus Gray. Uh, and the police said that he was a robbery suspect, that he was armed, uh, that they chased him and that he turned and fired on them. Now, they shot him. He was shot 14 times and died. His family disputes that version of events. They say they think it's fanciful. And here's his mother, Barbara Thomas. He was a happy, he was just happy. He was a happy child. When you found out he actually had been shot 14 times, who does that? This is the nation's capital. You laid on the ground, you're talking about all these other places around here that shoot. This is the nation's capital. Like I said, my son was born here, he was raised here, he went to school here, then he died here, and this is the best you can do for us, you know? You get, you, oh, no, you hold up to no responsibility. The first thing we heard when we first heard the report was wrong protocol, okay? If these guys were sitting at the bus stop and he's supposed to rob somebody at the bus stop and the police automatically go for whoever they thought fit the description and then five days, for five days, you hid this body from his parents, from his family, who does that? This is the nation capital. Just tell me how you felt knowing that he died at the hands of police officers. I'm very angry, but I, 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 I can't, I know it's not going to bring him back, but maybe my anger will get the attention of, of those out there that, that haven't experienced such a tragedy. It's the worst thing in the world to see your child being taken away that way, okay? That's why I'm saying, mothers, please, please grab hold of your kids and love your children, hug them children. And like I say, a lot of, like my brother also say, police are there to do a job. But the job that they're doing, they need more training. You know what I mean? That was uncalled for. Even, I'm, I'm saying, even the person that might have robbed them, that nobody deserved no 14 shots. 
Now the police in this case say that the incident is still under review and they didn't want to talk to us because of that. Uh, but that in itself has caused a problem for the family. They say six months down the road they still don't have the answers to exactly what happened. And here's Gregory Marcus Gray's uncle, uh, Thomas Wright. I was mad, certainly, uh, confused, um, disappointed, dejected. Uh, it was disheartening because he was a young man who was trying to get his life in order. And for that to occur the way it did, I was disappointed and dejected at the Metropolitan Police because from what I heard, they were haphazard in how they apprehended him. They really didn't apprehend him because they shot him. What was he doing to get 14 bullet wounds? What was it, target practice? He was standing in front of a, an apartment, which means some of those bullets went through the window. So they, they had reckless disregard, not just for his life, but for the lives of someone who may have been behind those pains. What were they thinking? You dispute the police's account here. Do you think if there had been footage, if somebody had happened to have a cell phone nearby, how different do you think things might be now? I think it, it may be markedly different if someone had had a camera, if someone had, had had a video, because one, we would have seen whether or not he actually fired on the police. I want the facts, I want the proof. And here we are six months later, and we're no closer to the truth than when we were when we first got a call saying that he had been shot 14 times by the police for as a suspected robber and and we know that black young black males we don't get they don't get a second chance they don't get an opportunity to say i didn't do it they don't they don't get an opportunity most times to the if in fact there's a weapon involved to put your weapon down to get on the ground you know it's target practice it's target practice the uncle of gregory gray uh, tom it's probably worth explaining when the police in the state are authorized to shoot well they can shoot people they can use lethal force if they believe that their lives or the lives of members of the public are in danger so given this is a country where there are you know 300 million guns in the population every police officer is armed you can see why uh, these incidents happen with this kind of frequency but of course what campaigners say is that there's a lack of proportionality that the police are uh, shooting people when they might not necessarily need to as you heard there uh, from Gregory Marcus Gray's uncle when you know uh, there may be another means to uh, try and de-escalate the situation mm. now you know the police themselves say that they feel in danger that they need to take lives and of course some of these incidents will be justified but I think what you've got now is a huge amount of scrutiny a huge amount of publicity to these cases which is uh, bringing new pressure on the police and and that's partly because the, the footage is being uploaded online almost immediately what kind of I impact is that having on the reputation of the police well, it's not doing them any favours, that's for sure. Particularly, I mean, you mentioned uh, uh, in the introduction there the case of the pool party down in uh, Dallas in Texas. Now, this was a bunch of teenagers where a police officer had been uh, called and which, at which, you know, he was seen to be using really excessive force. Um, people would argue against a 15-year-old girl pinning her to the ground. Now, that kind of stuff is obviously hugely damaging. That police officer resigned uh, after that. But actually, it's quite interesting that despite all the publicity, um, just the very fact that there is cell phone footage, mobile phone footage, doesn't necessarily mean that police are more likely to face charges. And we've seen cases in which there has been mobile phone footage. A man was held in a chokehold in New York City and died. Uh, and nobody in that uh, case was charged. None of the police were charged. In other incidents, um, they have been. Uh, so it really depends, I think, on the prosecuting authorities. How is it changing the way people view these, these incidents? Well, I think it's bringing a huge amount of attention to it. I mean, I, you know, I was chatting to one guy who works for the American Civil Liberties Union in New Jersey, and I mean, they are saying that this is bringing the conversation that we need to have about this. Uh, they're releasing an app so that people can film the police on their mobile phones and it will immediately be uploaded to that Civil Liberties Union. But there is a very important other side to this, and this is the police themselves. They're really worried about this. They think that incidents may be taken out of context, that there are times when they have to use force, and you just film a part of it from a particular angle. It may look unjustified, 
uh, when in fact it was a justified use of force. I spoke to a former chief of police in South California who said that he once went to uh, a robbery at a pizza joint and a load of uh, the employees had been herded into a freezer and these robbers were going to kill everyone. A man came out with a gun, was shooting at police and this police officer I spoke to shot uh, that robber. He wasn't killed, but he said, you know, if somebody had potentially just been filming part of that, it may have looked very different. His career could have been in danger. So there's always two sides to these stories, but what people are particularly worried about is, of course, the disproportionate number of black people uh, that are being affected by this. Thank you very much, Tom. Tom Bateman, live from Washington.